Hey Scrappers, it's Vanessa here, and I thought it would be fun to just show you, and I'm going to try to do this video real time as I decorate the first page of my Traveler's Notebook for my November trip to Disney. I'm trying to do a little bit of prep work before I go, and so I thought I would show you what I've done so far, and potentially put this front page together in a real-time video as opposed to a voiceover. So hopefully this isn't going to be too long. Um, I do apologize as well. If you hear my son yelling in the background, he and his dad are making a YouTube video and he's got his headset on and he can get really loud when they're playing their game. So let's get started. I will show you first. This is the Traveler's Notebook, and if you watched my Oh the Places We Go September Dash video, you would have seen that this month I am working on a trip to Disney from 2013, and I showed a kit and everything that I had pulled that's all sort of Disney themed that I'm using for that album. And as well at the end, I also showed this traveler's notebook that I plan to do my trip in November to Disney as sort of a traveler's notebook for some of it. I do plan to do some 12 by 12 pages, um, but that I think during the trip and for sort of a small little el travel album. I decided to try to do a traveler's notebook because I am using my Sprocket HP printer I'm going to take with me and try to print off a few pictures. And then I'm also going to give my kids little sticky notes as well. If you saw in that video, I showed them and they can write, you know, some of their memories so that I can use this as a way to document some of that. So here's what I've done so far, and I did show this. I have had the first one done, I think, in the original video, but I've gone ahead and added the tabs. So I basically took every once in a while and just gl glued two of the pages together and left a pocket that these little tabbed little library cards will slip into. And this is primarily probably where I will do the majority of my journaling will be on these little tabbed cards. And then I'll have snippets from the kids with pictures and things like that throughout. So not every page has one, just sort of here and there. And I basically just use Project Life cards. And I punched the Project Life cards. I just took, you know, my tab punch here, punched out the tabs. And then just added them so that they're easy to pull out of those little, those little sort of envelope pieces or pockets that I created in my traveler's notebook. So I again went with colors that matched the paper line that I'm using, which is pretty much going to be this Magical Adventures and a little bit of the Say Cheese 1 and 2 that I'm also using in my 2013 album. So I thought what I would do is I'm going to do this first page and because I don't want this to get too chunky you're gonna see I am going to try to keep things pretty flat which I like to typically use dimension on a lot of my projects but because this is a traveler's notebook and again I don't want it to get too big I am going to go for more flat stickers flat embellishing and very little dimension. I have a little bit of wood veneer that I'm debating about using and I'm going to hopefully put in some sequins but apart from that I really want to try to keep it somewhat flat. So I went ahead and cut this piece of blue cardstock and I'm going to put this as my front page and I am not covering I'm making it purposely that there's like a little white border around the edge so just in case you're wondering like hey that doesn't cover the whole thing I didn't mean for it to so I'm going to work on this though outside of this and then just glue it in after so like I said this is my base and I am using the magical adventure and so what I decided was I like this little three by four but I don't want the three by four I just want the magical adventure 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fussy cut this out. And sorry guys, I I fussy cut better when I'm sitting and I generally stand to do these process videos. So I, so hopefully I stay in camera while I'm sitting down to fussy cut this. And the reason I say that is because when I fussy cut, I like to keep my elbows in and often have them resting on something and then I turn the paper itself I don't turn my scissors so as you can see I go very slow so I do a lot of fussy cutting and if you were to if I was to ever slow my videos down and show them in real time you would see that it really does take me forever to do fussy cutting but I really love the look of fussy cutting. I love being able to use my papers and get extra use out of them by cutting out these different elements because I might not use a full 3x4 card, but I love the element that might be on a 3x4 card, so it's great to be able to take and just cut them apart. I am a big believer that you make your supplies work for you. So if you have something that you like, but you don't like the size that it's in, or you don't like sort of the background, maybe, if there is a way you can fussy cut out the pieces that you want, or punch, or die cut, I say go for it and use it that way. Whatever it is that's going to make you use the supplies that you have. So I am a big believer in doing that and getting the most out of your supplies because hey we buy them and we spend the money we might as well get as much use out of them as we can right so there you see i've fussy cut this and i haven't really thought about how this is going to go yet or how this is going to ultimately end up looking so this is completely me i have an idea in my head and we're just going to see if this works and i'm hoping because i have a hard time seeing what's in my phone because when I'm not standing, I can't see the screen. So I'm hoping that I'm still in frame. So I apologize if I go out of frame at some point, but um, I have some more fussy cutting I'm gonna do. So I'm going to keep on rolling. So I also like this four by four card for these balloons. And the other side has this plaid, which is really pretty. But again, I'm gonna use the pieces that I like and make my papers work for me. So again, I am going to fussy cut these balloons. And like I said, this is really sort of come along with me. I'm doing this real time. Let's see how this looks. Let's see if this works because I sort of have the idea in my head, but I have no idea if what I see in my head is going to work when I put it on paper. So, you know what? That's the fun of scrapbooking, right? Is sometimes the ideas that you have in your head and you think are gonna look good, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But the whole idea and point is to be creative and to make something ultimately that you love. Not everyone has to love it, but as long as you do, I say, hey, anything goes, there are no rules. And if you like the end result, that's all that matters. I'm a big believer in, you know what, not you never going to please everyone. And I say, if you like it and it looks good to you, then it's your scrapbook and no one should be able to tell you how it should look, right? So here's what I was thinking is I kind of like this sort of idea for my front cover, which I kind of am liking. I think it's kind of cute. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of cute. Little balloons coming up. And like I said, normally I would love to, to pop this up and give it some dimension. But again, because I really want to maximize this traveler's notebook and have it not be huge 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 i am really going to try and stick with 
it being flat, which is going to drive me crazy because I really love to layer and, you know, put things up on pop dots. But I'm going to refrain. I'm going to try to be really good and not do that. So I had the other idea that I wanted to do was I have these simple stories, Say Cheese 2. And it came with these gold stickers, which hopefully are not glaring too much. But I wanted to take and put the year down at the bottom. So again, you get to see how absolutely crooked I make everything. No joke. I am in no, well, actually, I won't lie. I won't lie. I am a bit of a perfectionist if you ask my kids, but to be honest, I don't think any of my scrapbook pages, if you were to really look at them, I don't think any of them are straight. I think there is an element of something being crooked on every one of my pages, and even though I'm kind of a perfectionist, I've had to kind of let that go because, especially doing mixed media and things like that, yeah, I just have to let it go because... It's never, mixed media especially, never going to be perfect. And yeah, my titles aren't straight half the time. <laughs> I really should pull out a ruler and do this, but you know, I am also don't want this to be a million years long, this video, and so we're just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to lie and say that after I leave this, <laughs> that I don't go back and rip them all up and put them on straighter, but... We're going to pretend that I don't think about doing that later. And I'm just going to put it down. We're going to call that good because, you know, Disney is whimsical and fun and I crooked titles sound really good to me. So let's go with it. So, okay. I like this. I like the 2018. And I am thinking I want to put Disney down here. And I, okay, so here's my other thing with these tile stickers. Is anyone like me, and even though they're tile and they're square <laughs> or rectangle or whatever they are, I still have a hard time lining them up straight. Anyone like me? It's just me, probably. But I will tell you that the reason why a lot of times when I use these, I end up doing sort of a bouncing baseline is because either I don't ever get them straight or I can't be bothered to try to line them up straight. So all honesty. Yeah. I like the bouncing baseline. And I figure because we're talking Disney and things are whimsical and everything's sort of fun, I think a bouncing baseline of my letter stickers are perfect for Disney. And when I say bouncing baseline, you'll see exactly what I mean here in a second as I put a couple of letters down. So see how, so see how my letters, they, they're all touching but they're not straight across here on the bottom. I'm sort of bouncing one up and then down, and then I'm going to do the next one up and the next one down. So a little bit of a bouncing baseline is what I know. I heard that I, the first person I've ever heard and the person I started watching YouTube videos was Mercy Tierra. And she often talked about doing bouncing baselines. And so that's, uh, that is definitely where I first heard that one. So I personally, with these tile letters, since getting them straight for whatever reason for me seems to be a problem sometimes, I am all for the bouncing baseline because I don't have to make them straight. It's supposed to be fun and whimsical and just easy. So little, little real time as I do this video in real time, little real life. Yeah, none of my things are straight. So rest assured that when you watch my scrapbook process videos, yeah, if you looked really, really closely, you would see that, yeah, there are, most things are not straight. I, I won't even try to, I won't even try to kid you because most stuff just doesn't turn out that way. All right, let's see you guys. I like it. I think it's kind of cute. Yeah, that's not straight, but that, again, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to be okay with it. But the only thing I'm thinking that I might add to this 
is I did pull sort of some sequins from my stash and one of the ones that I want to use I know I have yellow and blues and reds and I need to add some black but and I have these gold stars um, and I plan to use these throughout this because I find at least sequins give it a little bit of dimension without making too much bulk and I think what I would like to do is just add maybe add a couple of sequin stars to this one and see how I like it with three Or do I like just the one up at the thing? I'm going to leave it one, but you guys tell me when you watch this, if you think I should do sort of, I'm a big, I'm a big, like three, the, what is it? The visual triangle. <laughs> I totally couldn't remember the words <laughs> visual triangle and it it might drive me crazy that there's only one on this page <laughs> but you guys tell me tell me if you think that it needs any more than that I'm kind of leaning toward maybe on this one because it's a smaller canvas maybe I just go with the one but you guys leave me a comment and tell me what you think when you watch this back but I think I like this I'm not going to make you watch me glue it down, but I'm going to call this good. So what I'll do is when I put this video and upload it, I will add the still pictures of it completed and in my traveler's notebook to the video. And you guys can take a look at it. And again, leave me a comment and tell me if you think I should add more of these stars on this page or if you're thinking that the one, just that little touch is enough for this layout. And I will let you know, I do plan to do some embellishments that I kind of will carry through, not on every page, but on some of the pages in this. So be on the lookout. I'm going to do an embellishment video for that. So you will see that here hopefully soon. I just need to get time to video or put that video together. So yeah, guys, that I just wanted to do. Hopefully this wasn't too long, but I wanted to put this together real quick and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.